everyone. Today we are at RuPaul's Drag Con with... Mimi, I'm first. And this is On The Spot Interviews. How are you, Mimi? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Just hanging out. Yes, yes, this is the final day of Drag Con. It goes by so fast. What's been the highlight of your time? Oh, it's been amazing yeah. getting to meet all the fans. Yeah. It's just great to like see people face to face and like comment on your Instagram and follow you and so forth. Um, and just get to talk to them and meet them. Yeah, I love that. And uh, yeah, I love that you've been kind of really being um, honest and very like vocal on your social media recently. I think that's so important. Um, it brings up a good point. Would you say that drag queens have a responsibility to kind of speak out about important issues? Or do you think that's like too much pressure? Ooh, I think drag queens always have had that as a part of their day to day doings of being such a vocal and visible part of the uh, broader LGBTQ community. Um, I think it's I think it's hard as drag has become more commercial. Yeah. How do you find that voice to be the subversive uh, loud one? So it's it's interesting to see that kind of culture clash happen a little bit sometimes, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. And with drag becoming commercialized or some would say like mainstream immersed in pop culture, um, you also have a new audience to cater to. There's tons of kids at DragCon, but traditionally drag queens, you see them in clubs, which um, you know might be more risque or you can crack those jokes. How do you find the balance between being, you know, the more traditional drag queen with also catering to these little kids? I think it's super important to just know your audience and know where you are at any given time. I'm one of those queens that likes to do everything from like camp to like rock and roll, glamour, <laughs> you name it. I like to kind of mix it up. So I'm always doing different things depending on where uh, I am. So I think that's just key, you know? And I think that it's important for audiences to understand what are you watching, you know? So when you see somebody in a setting like this, uh, you know, it's gonna be very different. But if you're watching somebody at, I did a whole tour, The Haters Roast, which yes. is all politically incorrect jokes. And it's like, if you're coming to that show or you're watching it, like you're gonna hear offensive stuff. So yes. like, don't be offended by it if you tune in to watch it. So it's very, everything is very different. I think hopefully maybe people can learn to filter and uh, compartmentalize what they see when it comes to drag, but who knows? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Marie and Peter even say on the flyer, like, don't come if you're easily offended. So they're, they're warning everyone, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, people still don't, I see people bring their kids to that show and I'm like, I'm like, what are you, like, it's like offensive joke, of, it's like South, worse than a f South Park. Um, so it's just like, uh, you know, I don't know, it is what it is, but everybody's gonna make that own decision for themselves. Exactly, exactly, and we can't judge them. Um, and have you been able to like uh, reunite with any queens from Drag Race or have you been kind of just sitting at your booth? What's been going on? Yeah, I mean, it's hard because we're all like doing our booze and, and, and doing meet and greets and uh, selling our merchandise. So it's a little hard to interact sometimes, but we, you know, backstage or when we were setting up or passing by, it's nice to see people we haven't seen in a while. Oh, that's so fun. And uh, two more things. The, I have like a running theme of my DragCon interviews. Um, Again, with drag becoming mainstream, there are a lot of misconceptions being thrown around. Um, a really popular one is people seem to think uh, that sometimes drag queens all would like to transition. We know that is sometimes the case, not always. Are there any other misconceptions you maybe want to clear up for people? <laughs> you know, I, I, drag queens are people at the end of the day. And I understand there's a little bit of that like Disney magic when we all have this on, but like sometimes when we're done, we're done. And so like, it's funny, but people are like, I met Mimi and she's a bitch. It's like, you probably met me when I was like on my way, trying to get to somewhere I was late, had to be there. And it's like, and I'm not on stage, I'm not on stage. And just, you can't expect that same energy or personality when I'm, you know, when I'm not engaged. I'm very much, this is, this is a character, trust yeah, me. Yeah, and you know, the sparkles activate that character. Yes. So I bet you like barely had even any sparkles when these people were trying to meet you. So you know what, you get a pass. Yeah. Definitely. Well, thank you so much. And lastly, if you just want to plug your social media for us, that would be awesome. Sure, yeah. I'm Mimi I'm first on everywhere. Everywhere from Instagram to Craigslist. So come and find me. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Mimi. And have a great last day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Oh, of course. Bye, guys.